Hey guys, welcome to Warlord Weekly. I'm Warlord Brett. This is Warlord Raven. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be our first attempt at doing a video review. Hopefully we got this all working. We've uh, had some trouble, but I think we're ready to go now. Um, so today we're going to be reviewing a first to ten Florentine versus Florentine between Bino and Anatole. Uh, for people who don't know, Bino's an up-and-comer in Golden Vale right now, right? Currently, yeah. Uh, and I think this last weekend, he just got his fifth turn uh, Kingdom Tourney win. So, um, you know, he's definitely on his track to getting his Warlord. So, he's definitely someone to watch out for. Anatole, I would assume most of y'all know him, but if you don't, he is a Warlord and one of the top fighters in the country. So, he should be a good first to ten. Um, both of them fighting flow. Uh, I know Anatole practices flow a lot. It's definitely not his best style, mm -hmm. but uh, he is more than competent with it. And uh, I know Bino practices quite a bit, so should be a good matchup. Mm -hmm. Anything to say about it? Um, no. Uh, other than um, the advice for the viewers who may not uh, understand some of the things that these guys are doing. Wonder why they're not doing the most optimal thing they possibly could, or whatever. Um, <clears throat> uh, for these two fi fighters in particular, they like to practice a lot of stuff they don't know. So maybe if you're seeing some things that look a little odd, it's probably because they're trying new things out and um, they're trying to have fun. Um, it's not, you know, necessarily the most tactically supreme thing to do, but they're doing it because it's fun and it's uh, a learning experience. Yeah. Definitely good at learning. And then once again, so we're going to do a little bit of like review of what's going on and then also critique. Understand with our critique, um, we're looking at it from an outside standpoint going in. If we are saying, I don't know why they're not doing this, um, it could be something that they've overlooked and that they should be doing. But it could also be something that they just fought 20 fights before we watched this first to 10. There's a very good reason they're not doing it and staying away from it. We don't know. So... Keep that in mind, but with that being said, we're going to do some review here and give some critique, right? All right, let's get this started. All right. Something that's really cool to notice is um, Bino puts his right hand forward to kind of mitigate the jabs of Anatole's right hand and try to get him to swing to the outside. Or forcing Anatole to try to swing to the outside on uh, Bino's right side with that horizontal guard. <clears throat> yeah. Trying to see if the video's playing a little faster, if it's if it's correct. <laughs> We'll see. It might be going a little bit fast, but I think this is the best we're going to have for this one. So, going into this, one of the things that I noticed a lot in the beginning here is Anatole is doing a whole lot to try to open up with one hand and then take a center line with the second hand. Um, which is really interesting and deceptive. It means he's throwing a lot into his offense, right? He's tying both of his hands into it, but it's very difficult to fight. Um, even right there was a little bit of a of an example, you know. Let's let's look at the, a couple of these again. You know, I'm talking about this. So when you come in here, you're gonna look. He's doing a little setup with his left hand, just a little twitch before going inside. Got that inside arm slot. Yep. So let's see if that's something he he sticks to here. Yeah. See, once again, trying to draw out that right hand to get an inside laying that time Bino stepping out of it, but it definitely looks like something he's trying or working on at this time. Some I'd like to see a little bit more as a good um, a good threat from Bino to keep Anatole away from him. Maybe a little jab or something. Mm. But I also know that he may be, tick may be avoiding that because Anatole has a really good counterattack, so he may be uh, guarding that very well. Yeah. It's kind of hard to say this early on, but it looks like Bino is definitely trying to back out, wait for the big shot and counterattack. And, uh, of course, as I say that, he doesn't take the counter and then pushes in. But um, 
Anatole definitely seems to be the main aggressor here. And it's all with a nice edge to his balls right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zach's Bino's defense is looking really good right here. Like uh, anything that's coming in, you know, a lot of combo attacks coming in from Anatole. Bino's really getting out of the way and blocking pretty well. Um, mm -hmm. Some inconsistency that I'm kind of starting to see is like. Uh, the only inconsistency in the defense is maybe that when they get too close to one another or they've they've gotten too close because one is dedicating to attack while the other one is jabbing and they end up siloing a few times. Um, there's definitely an error in your offense or your defense depending on which person you are. Let me go ahead and turn this down just a little bit. All right. This is a good call. They talked it out and decided Bino was late. I think it was all around a good call. And it's a good thing to do in those situations is make sure you're communicating with your opponent. There you go. So Anatole's starting to open up with a lot of jabs, trying to make Bino mm -hmm. uncomfortable. Bino did a good job of finding an opening and stepping in there, but I think he took the Simo for it. Something that's really, uh, really important for when, when uh, Bino is deciding to go on the offense and come in, he's done a lot of preparatory work in getting past um, Anatole's counter jabs and his general counters, and you know, so he can't come in straight away because he'll get countered or whatever. But if you can kind of do some preparation on that, you can avoid some of those. It's a part of your defense as you come in. It's a good habitat, especially for Florentine. Yeah. I think one of my critiques I have right now, if we pause it right here, and I, we'll, we'll see if it continues throughout this video, is so with Anatole, a lot of his attacks are very just full-on offense. Both of his swords are working together to create the opening and take the kill. And while that's a very effective and difficult thing to deal with as the defender, you're going to see that he's taking a lot of hits, a lot of Simos, and sometimes... Even worse, he's opening up, uh, opening up Bino, but only taking an arm, and Bino is going in for the kill. So that's something that he needs to watch out for, in my opinion, is how you know his defense because he's just opening up way too much, in my opinion. Yeah, I think something I'd like to see more is more mindfulness to what's going on in their their exchange range because they're very you know stay out of range. Someone will come in or attempt to get into range, the other person will just disengage. So some I'd like to see on both of their parts is a little bit more interaction in their exchange and throwing more feints. And three more feints during the exchange on either person's part um, and incorporating more defensive elements during that exchange besides just swing. Okay. Let's get going again. Is a pretty slip by Anatole slipping inside. Anatole is doing a wonderful job of taking the inside, which, I mean, in most fights you're going to be, especially in Florentine, you want those inside lines. He's doing a real good job of getting there. Um, he's definitely taking shots from Bino on the outside, but that's sort of the same thing. Bino's <clears throat> countering somewhat aggressively, so it's what some of this trading's happening. Yeah. Some I actually like. I like to do myself as my fight Florentine and start it from one, starting from either one side or the other, and then setting up to where I can get move transition into the center position, so I can throw an inside shot and then exit from to a side position again. And he's doing it really, really neatly. Yeah. <laughs> 
a lot of baiting, a lot of, of, of jabs and toying, trying to get something out. But once again, you're seeing these just huge kind of all or nothing shots. It's the biggest critique I have over what I'm seeing right now because a lot of the range game is very pretty. A lot of real safe stepping in, but for both of them when they decide like, I'm going to go for it, I, I feel like it's just a little too aggressive. See, that's that same thing. Both people looking, one person steps in big, the other person looking for a counter, and it's causing so many simos because neither of them are overly defensively minded. Um, and hey, it's Florentine on Florentine that happens some. Mm. Nice. Anatole, once again. That, that first shot opening up for the second shot. <laughs> double, double, like. Double, double. That's one of the situations where, you know, both these guys are having a lot of fun when they're fighting. Yeah, and trying stuff out. Yeah, until we come in with the, the hand center bluff, so they both don't like each other. You know, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to re-show this real quick, just because I was about to say I really like how Anatole's switching it up. There we go, it's about to start. And, and starting to play a little bit more aggressively and try to create openings, but he makes the mistake of getting too close while doing it and getting an easy pick, right? So I like the idea of these little jabs back and forth, but you see, you got to make sure you're watching your positioning because it becomes an easy snipe. Nice. Oh, he didn't quite get that block. That was a pretty try, though. <laughs> Almost straight to the eye. So once again, you're going to see just kind of I'm gonna back up here and kind of one of my overall themes of, of what I'm seeing here is there's these nice little pokes to the outside but both of them are not very defensive minded so what you're gonna see here is he's gonna do some little setup jabs but the second Bino tries to return in instead of blocking and trying to set up the other arm or any sort of parry thing he's gonna to try to just squeeze out of it and counter throw and this kind of falls into that whole very offensively minded thing. Doesn't want to take the block into a strike and is hoping to take, uh, is hoping to just beat him through a, a smarter offense, basically, and then it bites him. So there's no real mindfulness to progression and safety. Yeah. So you're going to see the shot's going to come. Uh, and, you know, that was possibly a bit of a Simo throw, but. Still, it's just kind of a theme of the fight.
something I liked in the last exchange. <clears throat> Mantle threw about three outside shots in a row as he's hopping. Um, I kind of like the progression he made a little bit more, but something I would have, you know, maybe tried out a little bit is maybe one, maybe two outside shots, and then fainting a stab in or fainting an inside shot. If he's really trying to hit that arm, try to add a, a faint to the exchange there, and his hand will come back in, and you can throw outside again. Yeah, but it was definitely a good hard press. I think he yeah. realized that Bino was stepping, was was on his back foot and was looking just to disengage. For sure. And so he was able to follow up that. Um, that's not something you want to do if they're solid on their feet. Nice. Yeah, that was just a nice fake. <laughs> it's a pretty shot. Almost got the stab to the chest, too. <laughs> yeah. I think that's one of those where both people step in, hoping the other person's going to do something, immediately realize they're not doing it, and then just swing at the same time, trying to not lose. The double spin to finish it. Let's get off this. God damn. There we go. Alright guys. Let's do some uh, closing remarks. So my, my big takeaways from this, right? So looking at what we're doing. Alright, so if if you're looking at this, I like seeing what Anatole's doing. A lot of setting up one sword with the other and some really interesting ways to set it up. Um, especially towards the end, especially in the beginning, a ton of, of using one sword to open up a center line and taking it. He definitely was a fan of the center line. Yeah. <clears throat> um, uh, I also feel like Anatole one of the big things that Vino might have it is, is having issues with is Anatole was able to control every one of these these engagements, right? Um, you see Anatole's constantly the one uh, walking Bino down. Bino is very much, except for a few fights where he steps in, he's almost constantly retreating and trying to counter throw, which isn't necessarily the worst thing but you want to make sure that you're not letting uh, the other person get comfortable in controlling the fight because as yeah. they start realizing what you're doing and where your counters are, it is a problem letting them control the pace that way. Yeah. Um, so when you're looking at that, I would like to see a little bit more uh, aggression from Bino here and then, here and there, stepping up, throwing his own jabs. We saw very little jabs coming from Bino. Um, so, those are some things that I would look at changing early on, along with what we talked about, the aggression. Just, uh, I would like to see a little bit more defense-minded attacks. Yeah. And I think, especially in Florentine versus Florentine, there's a... There's a <clears throat> people don't recognize the nuance a lot of attrition. So... Once you start giving ground without really any, you know, create any creating any difficult terrain for your opponent to move through, they're gonna start controlling the fight more frequently, faster, more consistently. Um, to echo off what Brett said, I don't think it, I don't think disengaging and then coming in with a counter is necessarily the worst thing you could do. It's just you have less chances of winning because those things that you're doing are a tad bit more isolated. Whereas if you're fighting in the exchange a lot more and fighting over that space, you can create openers that are less telegraphed and 
um, more abundant in those positions. Um, yeah, it's kind of like if I had to kind of imagine the how to describe the fight. Anatole throws a lot of smoke into his fight, so there's this. His defense relies a lot on I might counter you, or his offense relies a lot on throwing deception into the fight. Mine is really just getting away from that smoke and then coming through it or around it to really get to him. Um, that's good. Um, I like that, but there are more techniques and things you can do to really, you know, navigate that difficult terrain that Anatole has created. And is certainly attempting to defend with his aggression. Right, yeah. I mean, I like the the idea of it. I mean, he kind of does throw up smoke in front of him, right? There's tons of deception, tons of, of just poking and prodding, looking for the shots. Um, so, and because Anatole is really putting a heavy emphasis on offense when he's opening up, you know, using one sword to open up for the other more than, you know, opening and taking an opening with the same sword while defending with one, right? Not nearly as many single sword fake with defense as opening with offhand, you know, one hand for the other, right? Because of that, it's leaving him open to a lot of Bino's counterattacks, and that's yeah. one of the reasons you see Bino, or them end with so many Simos, and why I think this ended like 10-7 or something, and Bino gets a lot of points off of just counterattacking him, but I would like to see him be able to meet him in the middle some, because if nothing else, it helps temper his press a little bit, yeah. which can give you a lot of advantages. If he feels free to move forward and feels like, you know, I know that I can hit him, you know, I can play all this and I can hit him, and it's just a question of whether or not he's getting hit. Well, you know, if it's in a tournament, it's okay to take three Simos if you know you're going to get the kill every time. You're just waiting for the other person not to get the kill. That's not necessarily what was happening here, but I feel like Anatole was pretty comfortable in his shot landing when he decided to step in for the big shot. Right. And it was just a question of whether or not he was going to mm -hmm. stop Bino. I think you could have gotten him a little bit more off of, his, uh, off of his game, a little bit less willing to commit for those big shots if you were able to meet him in the middle before he got there and, and kind of match his smoke. As yeah, say. yeah. Uh, there's a lot of, there were certainly a lot of positions and areas that weren't being fought over. Uh, simply, maybe one or one or two particular areas. But yeah, you can certainly get in there and grind. Not grind, but you know, fight in the exchange a lot more. So you can find more opportunities of, you know, killing your opponent besides just defense. <clears throat> so another thing that I think that I'd like to see from Anatole. Um, is a little bit more, I guess, uh, big setups to create a counter opportunity. He's a, he's very good at counter fighting and he does it a lot off of these little jabs. The only issue I have with it is that his offense is very rarely jab based, right? His offense is very often these complex m movements with both swords even when he's bored, it's complex, you know, movements. So these little jabs and setups, while making Bino uncomfortable, maybe, I also never really feel like there's any actual threat from it. And so I think he's going to get, I think he would get a little more mileage in the counter game from setting up some more complex movements that are not meant to hit, but will look more like Anatole is trying to hit you than these jabs, if that makes sense. Right. Right. I'm not going to throw back into one of his little prodding jabs because I know he's looking for me to throw back into it. But if he does something a little more complex when coming in, I may counter because I feel like that's when I feel like Anatole is actually trying to attack me. And it seems like a great time to counter. That makes sense. Did I say that right? Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Um, I thought at first you were going to say it needs more consequence. Like, if I jab at you and you just don't do anything or you slightly move, there should be more consequence in the setup. Like, the initial strike should have more oomph behind it. Or yeah. Seema, at least, like, has more oomph. 
so that they're afraid of what happens next. Yeah, I think there's something to be said um, for his for what he's doing there. That's I, there's an MMA fighter and two brothers, and I'm blanking on their name right now. Nate, Nate, Nate and Diaz, Diaz yes, yeah. who do a lot of this like 50% punches, right? And they throw out volume that's not really meant to do anything, and then intermix single punches in there that are suddenly real. Right. And I think he has a little bit of that style to him that I really like. Um, I think the only thing that my issue is is going back to the fact that those single punches are always more complex moves. And so those little punches seem a little less threatening than they should, right? Because I, I, I think it is too easy to differentiate between his... What is not and what is. What is not and what is, yeah. right? Um I think, I think that would. I don't know this for sure. I'm gonna guess. I'm guessing he shies away from that because of the lack of defense in his Florentine, right? So he's he's less committal because of him. He has no certainty in his defense as he's throwing those legitimate shots. Yeah. I would maybe suggest if you want some, if to mix it up a little bit. Um, I think there needs to be more interaction between where. When I throw a shot and I want to incorporate defense into it, especially in Florentine, I try to think of the geometry when I I want to get our swords in it, this, our swords intersecting in a particular way to between. When I end my attack, I'm cutting off some area of the body, and my other hand can address the other part of the body. So if you imagine you're coming up on somebody, and you were walking to the right, you know, leading right hand forward, and your opponent starts circling with you, if I come in and I throw, you know, a rear hand jab, but it's a horizontal slash, you know, our, our swords are perpendicular now, and then my my leading hand can address their left hand. Um, I know that's kind of hard to understand from video, but there's some things that you can do to cover the ground to let you throw really solid attacks as you come in, besides um, a less committal one that's a little bit more obvious, I guess. Yeah. No, I understand. So... All right, so that was what we had to say for Anatole Bino mainly... Just, I'd like to see you fight him a little bit more for the for the initial space. Um, you've got solid counters, but I feel like a lot of times you're throwing those counters because you've been put in a bad spot. When he's stepping in, he's stepping in in a situ in a way that he is most likely going to hit you, and you are taking an you're taking the opportunity of him being open to try to score a double kill or hopefully take a wound to his kill. And I think that's leaving you fighting off the back foot a lot, right? You're you're fighting kind of a losing battle. It's I mean it's obviously I mean, it works some, right? I mean you're sitting there, you're you're trading with him. You did fairly well in this thing. But I do feel like a lot of times you were just trying to see what you could get um before he killed you, almost. Yeah. <clears throat> I think something that would really help to allow you to contend for that space would be um, and s if you would allow for more setup during those exchanges. So if he's pressuring you or whatever, and instead of having to disengage, you can throw a feint or something back at him, which would s disrupt his attack, and then you can come back and do something. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird. Like allowing yourself to throw these attacks and throw these feints as someone's advancing on you also allows you to set up to take back that ground. So you have this ebb and flow uh, of back and forth. You know, if someone if someone engages, I throw something back at them. It doesn't have to be real or can be real, and they have to give that ground, which will allow me to take the space back. Yeah, I definitely like that. And I guess something else that I would say about the counters that kind of bothered me. Because throwing, I mean, a counter game, backing out and countering is not a bad thing. Like, we're going to complain about it a little bit here. That is not a bad thing. That is completely good. I think what bothered me the most is most of your counters were to deep body. The problem with countering to deep body is that you're not using your range to back out of his strike. Mm. If you are not using your range, and rather than defending, you are countering to deep body, it sounds, it feels to me like you are accepting a double hit and hoping your hit is a higher value target than their hit is. 
So if you want to play this counter game, I would prefer you to see you back out a little bit harder and throw sh to their arms, basically, throw short and step and try to snipe them as they're trying to reach to you. So get them reaching because you're keeping distance, and then you have a chance to counter snipe arm, things like that, and now you're starting to get them uncomfortable with extending into a shot, right? Now they're worried about reaching into a shot because you're keeping range and counterattacking that shot by taking their arm. That's a much more threatening thing to go into than I feel like I can hit this guy in the shoulder, but he might swing from my hip. Well, now we're moving into like, I'm worried I might not win this, but I'm pretty sure I can't lose this. There's not the same fear as uh, I, I might lose you know, like, this guy's gonna pick me apart, I need to make sure I've got it. So that would be my big thing on your counter game, is trying to keep a little bit more range and throwing to shallow targets so that you're not trading as much. Right. I think, uh, it's, it's an engagement mistake that I make sometimes, too, where I'm too caught up on stepping back that I often miss out on opportunities to turn the tide in my favor, especially in some of the exchanges where I would reach super far that's usually a good opportunity to step to the left or to the right and instead of stepping straight back and using geometry with your sticks to to create defense as you can throw a counter attack. Um, especially if they're reaching out straight with one hand, you can basically get both your swords on that attack versus this one and creating some geometry where my offhand or something's guarding. As I step out, I can get basically my sword against two of his swords and get a free shot with my stick. Um, more sticking and moving rather than disengaging. Yep. Yeah, I dig it. All right, guys. Uh, I think that's going to be it for this video review. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, you know, like and subscribe. Uh, leave a comment. Let us know what you thought about it. Let us know what you can change. It's the first time we've ever done it. Uh, you know, I felt like the beginning was a little... We were trying to figure out what to... <laughs> it took an hour. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well... <laughs> That was before the video started. But anyway, I, you know, I think towards the end, we caught our stride, and I think there's a lot of good info in it. But um, if I, I think maybe going through the video, doing it a little bit different next time, we'll see. But uh, this is definitely going to be a, a regular occurrence on Warlord Weekly. So this will be, it'll, it'll just get better from here. So I hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, see you all at SKBC. See you all at SKBC. Woo! Peace out.